Janar Shrivastava, uh, all distinguished guests, senior veterans from the army, industry leaders, DGs, CNDs, and uh, members of the diplomatic community who are also here. Uh, I want to thank the Kiki and both St. George for giving me this opportunity to uh, share our thoughts on this very topical topic as far as DG Amarkor is concerned the tank combination and the anti-tank combination. Uh, let me uh, begin this by again saying what others have also spoken. When we talk of capability building, we generally talk of the black box. We somehow miss out the mission part. But no weapon is of any use if the mission which it fires is not accurate, is not lethal and is not consistent. So talking of tank ammunition or any ammunition is generally fired from the barrel. If that barrel doesn't support the high DOP ammunition, definitely any ammunition development which have done in isolation will not know the weapon system also. As also it is the ammunition which matters, not only the weapon system. Uh, this ecosystem uh, which uh, we are trying to develop of developing all kinds of ammunition, I think I will just highlight one or two uh, important points in this regard also. Uh, the first and most important is the Indian Army requirement, if I can speak for the Army and also for the Armored Corps, the requirement of ammunition is huge. So uh, if there are more players, more people from the private as also from the corporate now called defense, corporate defense or DPSUs. Uh, there is enough requirement for the Indian Army because mission keeps on getting fired. We are in certain operational situations. It is used for training, so the requirement as such is huge. The second part which I want to highlight is that as far as the ammunition is concerned, if we develop a certain uh, capability, it needs to be improved in times to come. For example, we are firing a, a shaped charge, but then, you know, we need to develop a tandem uh, charge also. So there is a continuous need for evolution of that ammunition. The third uh, point or part on, as for the industry is uh, concerned is that Uh, the private place coming, it gives an opportunity for the JVs to be formed. We are well aware that uh, there is a little bad lack of technology with us, so we need the private place to come. Therefore, coming now straight to the tank ammunition, I have a, a distinguished panelist, I will not take much time. But as far as the tank ammunition is concerned, you see, tank firstly is a weapon system. It combines the main gun, which fires the KE ammunition which fires the CE ammunition and it also fires the missile. Then there is an MMG. Then there is an anti-aircraft gun. And what we are lately trying to do is combine the man and man teaming with the tanks. Therefore, this weapon system has to be understood. And in the future warfare, of course, tank has been spoken, but I will just give one point. Uh, the future warfare is all about MPF, Mobile Protected Firepower. So tank is MPF. The protection part has uh, uh, been highlighted in some recent actions which are taking place all around the world. But that point also needs to be understood. The tank was always designed to fight a tank. So therefore the frontal armor and everything was very strong. We had a ERA panels. The aerial threat was not there so significant. So therefore that was a weakness. So that weakness has been exploited by drones to some extent, but it is not visible in the recent conflict which is ongoing. And then top attack missile. So the future tank, and uh, of course the light tank is also coming as a DJ Armored Corps, it's progressing well, hopefully we should get the AON soon. The future tank will have adequate protection from the top. So the mobile is there, the protected will be ensured. And the firepower, I already said the tank has so many elements to combine itself. So tank is an element of the future war in which, especially when we are dealing as India, 
India is concerned, we are dealing with territorial issues. Any land forces staying power is defined by the tank, whether you want to launch an offensive or an attack. So the staying power of land forces get defined by the tank. So therefore, the importance of the ammunition which we need to develop for the tank. As far as KE is concerned, of course, points will be coming, but higher DOP ammunition, but again I said higher DOP ammunition is being developed and uh, the, uh, we had the speakers earlier saying the higher DOP has been developed by India, that's uh, good progress, but that is uh, to a certain extent of 530 or 550. If we need to go higher, we have to change the battle. So that point I have already highlighted. So we need higher DOP because the as the uh, armor or the protection systems improve, you have to keep on getting the higher DOP. And as we have seen in the Euro set, a tank KF-51, which has a 130mm cannon, which possibly is firing a higher DOP. And what we have seen in the recent conflicts, ammunition being fired more than 600 or 700 mm. I am not sure how to do the thing. As far as the chemical energy emission is concerned, which is whether heat or HE, the heat especially has to be tandem for it, which we need. At the moment, possibly it's not. And the round has to be multi-purpose. It can be anti heptar round. The multiple rounds are being developed across the world. So that is the requirement. Uh, the importance of KE emission I want to highlight, or of the tank as such, I want to highlight. The PGNs uh, which are firing, uh, they cost a lot, but all tank ammunition, which actually not a PGM, is actually a PGM because it fires accurately. So a tank normally carries around 40 rounds, so each tank has 40 rounds of PGM ammunition. So that point has to be understood. And with ranges increasing, the tanks are able to fire about 4 to 5 kilometers. And now we are trying to get indirect firing capability for high altitude also. And as also I said, if you are combining the man and man teaming of loiter ammunition onto the tank or the airfields, then you are going beyond line of sight. So this becomes a complete package for the combat forces which are fighting on the ground. The company are mechanized infantry or the infantry, they have to hold ground. So they need a potent platform which can support all their actions of holding ground or in support of capture of ground, which is a main concern as all of us know on both the fronts. Uh, I will not take much more time, just few uh, uh, quick points. Uh, the user involvement has to be very, very strong. The requirements have to be spelled out clearly, which we understand. And uh, I would like to highlight that in this DRDO success, the user involvement was very intense and especially we were able to give our KK ranges at Tamindaga for trials and so many other uh, support which we were able to provide. The other important part of tank ammunition is quality control and automation. You see, any other ammunition can uh, not that can be less safe, but especially the ammunition which is in the tank. And you have seen the this thing. Any uh, safety parameter not met can be a cause of an accident, and the equipment which is worth crores can uh, go down the drain. So safety and automation of ammunition is again important because the quality control varies in the ammunition now being produced is slightly manual. So the round to round variation is very high. So that needs to be done. The point for proof ranges and all, uh, that point is noted, we'll try and put across that point. But definitely I can tell you, whatever assistance is being required by the DRDO, of course, has its own things, but by the uh, corporates now, or the defense PSU, we are definitely uh, going, uh, taking a step uh, much forward than what was being done, uh, done earlier. Uh, other requirement is that uh, sometimes we are looking too much in future. There is a huge requirement of the current ammunition also. So that also is a field where, you know, the industry or the other people can, uh, in the, because, you see, uh, if you have to fight a war today, we need the supplies of current ammunition. The future will uh, may take some time. And one point which Armored Corps uh, definitely wants is the RHA plates. We are importing RHA plates for trials of APFS DS munitions from abroad, which is, I think, something which any industry should be able to make it. They're costing a lot. So I'll not take more time. As the speakers go ahead, uh, if there are some issues and points, I'll give it, and then we can have a question-answer session. Thank you.